Welcome in everyone and greetings from Yumble Corp. Thank you for attending this presentation on traffic management and city skylines. If your trucks are stuck and your cars can't get far, you're in the right place, so stay where you are. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Real funny, mister. Laugh it up. Oh look, it's the local troublemaker Billy. Billy, I heard you just got city skylines. How's that working for you? It's going great, thanks for asking. It's the perfect city. It's got hospitals, cops, tall buildings. I even put in a school. There's just one thing. The perfect city, you say? That's great, Billy. But what's wrong? Well, mister, it's just... It's this darn traffic. I hate it. The cars don't do anything I want. It doesn't make any sense. There's an open lane. Take the open lane. What's wrong with you? I built the perfect road network and they won't use any of my roads. I just don't get it. Oh, Billy. Sounds to me like you have a lot to learn about the traffic system in city skylines. What traffic system? They won't do anything I want. It doesn't make any sense. I think the game is broken. Oh, uh, hey. Characters from an educational video made in the 1950s? Is that what this is? Yeah, okay, I get it. My name is Yumble, and I think I might be able to help. Ew, a YouTuber. Gross. And that is the last time we're doing this bit. Ah, traffic in city skylines. Where to begin? I hear a lot of complaints about the traffic system in this game, and I want to... I think I want to demystify it today and talk about my experience with uh, how to manage traffic and ultimately how to understand the system so that you can eventually game it and make it do what you want. The first thing that I would recommend considering when thinking about traffic in city skylines is actually thinking about the simulation in terms of agents rather than in terms of vehicles. When I say that, I'm talking about th thinking about the origin point and the destination of each citizen Instead of being at a path by car, think of it as a, a world of different modes that they may choose. If the business or, or a commercial area that they're going to go to to shop or work is within walking distance of their home, they will walk there. So a mixed use area can be really important in, in uh, curbing traffic in your city. You can also have luck putting uh, transit within walking distance of Sims or putting bike lanes in to increase the, the range of their bikes. But don't think of it in terms of cars and, and don't assume that everyone is going to spawn a car when they appear. If there's a pathable option that can be walked or biked or taken by transit, the Sims will do that. So encourage that as much as possible, fundamentally. Another extremely powerful option when trying to get Sims to walk or take transit can be an inner city connection. So in this case, I'm showing a train station. It could be an inner city train station. It could be an airport. It could be a, a um, harbor. But anything that allows Sims to move into the city or come visit the city without driving, if you don't have an external connection, you're essentially forcing them to drive cars in from the highway. And no matter how good your highway connections are, it may not be enough. Um, so external connections are a really good way to get pedestrians into your city that can then take an internal transit network or walk or bike to their destination, avoiding the car altogether. So you get it. I know you get it. Walkability, bikeability, transit, all very important things. Same goes for cargo. A couple of well-placed cargo connections can save your highway interchanges and arterials a lot of trouble. Speaking of arterials, though, the next thing to worry about would be road hierarchy. Road hierarchy is this concept. I have another video that covers it very well. A uh, road layout tutorial, something to that effect. I'll link it in the top right corner. Um, and also another video about city starts ranked. Those two videos combined talk about how to start a city with solid road hierarchy. This concept is, is just the, the idea that roads have an order. And as long as you respect this order, things will work out. When I talk about road hierarchy, just in, in uh, brief terms, this is a highway. So this is top dog here. Highway, free flowing, no lights on the highway. A highway connects to an arterial. Arterials are the major routes through your city. So you'll see this median road up here and split apart and turn into additional median roads. And that thus far is good road hierarchy. Then after the arterial, you'll get these uh, what are called collector roads. 
collector roads should be maybe a step smaller than the arterial in terms of lane width. But these roads job is to connect your local roads, which are the smallest roads, which, which actually connect to the places that people live in and work in and shop in. And that is, that is road hierarchy. The opposite applies where your, your sims start off on a local road generally, and then they connect to the collector. And then they collect, uh, then they connect to an arterial, which is the big median road once again. Boom, there it is. And that arterial system can take them all over the city. So here's just an overview of it. Highway, arterial, collector, local road. As long as you respect that, in combination with walkability, bikeability, transit, all of these things, that is optimal, in my opinion. This can look like a lot of different things. This is how it happens to look in this New England-based build, but it could look like uh, roundabouts being used as well. It could look uh, like a small town up here. You can still have a, a hierarchy of roads without even changing the size of the roads. So a two-lane road can connect to uh, other two-lane roads. It's all just context. It's all context. The through road here, I, I upped it to four lanes because that makes sense. But contextually, we're still going from highway down to uh, collector and local road system in this area. One other fact about road hierarchy is you generally want uh, higher volume roads to have lower access. And what that means is less that the highway will have the least connections, be it intersections, typically interchanges on the highway. The arterial will have more intersections, more connections, but still it's fairly limited. You have to be on a collector road to get to the arterial. The collector road will have more connections than that, but it still won't be as many as local roads, and then local roads can have virtually unlimited connections if you're smart about it. That is the is the reality of road hierarchy. It's it's very it works very well in reality. It works very good in city skylines too. Um, don't forget about road hierarchy and be sure to watch the videos that I mentioned earlier. Here is a fine example of a backed up intersection in city skylines, and you'll notice something about this. This is a common critique of the of the traffic system in cities. They're only using one lane, really, and there's a reason for this, and we can understand that reason and potentially overcome it. But the way that City Skylines works, the way that the traffic system functions, earlier I spoke about agents and pathing and how City Skylines will spawn a sim and that sim will either decide to walk or bike or use transit. And if those aren't available, they're gonna spawn a car or a truck or whatever, the, whatever type of vehicle is necessary. If they do that, they will pick a predetermined path and that path will, will include where they're gonna turn at intersections. It will also include what lane they're going to use. So the reason that vehicles all use the same lane in city skylines is because they don't path based on each other. It's not like your, your GPS where it's gonna reroute you based on traffic or tell you what to do based on any activity of someone else. They are disregarding each other entirely, though there's another open lane here, and this, this backup could be half as far probably if these cars would use this lane. That lane doesn't suit their needs because this inner lane is taking them all to the highway. Now we can observe this by clicking on one of the problem vehicles and checking the path. This is called the toggle traffic routes view. And you can see that this entire line of traffic is all going to the same, the same uh, loop to get onto the highway. Because we know this, because we know that cars will, vehicles, will always run a predetermined route and not adjust for one another, we can then ask these questions and decide, is this a, a chronic problem? Are the vehicles backing up constantly and consistently because maybe there's not enough options for them? Maybe there needs to be a different route available or a different mode of, of transit or walkability available or just a different road. It could be an entirely different, uh, there could be an entirely different connection that's necessary that you haven't made yet, perhaps. Um, one common thing that I see is people forcing vehicles onto the highway when really there should be an overpass to help get them over the highway. I've seen situations where um, builders will build one interchange and then another interchange down here and then not connect the areas 
via a local road, so it forces all this traffic onto the highway and you get backups that look an awful lot like this. Another question to ask is, is it a breakdown in road hierarchy? Could there be another uh, connection that helps out and can that connection respect road hierarchy? If everyone's being condensed down to one lane for no good reason or because you're connecting a teeny tiny local road to a major road and all the traffic is pathing to that, well then of course they're all gonna back up in one lane. That makes perfect sense, right? It's just a matter of recognizing these things and ultimately asking the right questions to see where your, your road network might be lacking. As part of this example, I wanted to point out that I actually induced this demand for, for this left lane artificially by deleting part of the highway. So I, I promise the city is healthy otherwise. I've not, I've not built a city where that's the case. If I reinstate the sections of highway I deleted, they will actually uh, path fa fairly normally. It's because this is inner city traffic that's actually trying to get to the other side of the map. So please don't say it's the intersection's fault. Um, a roundabout would work well here. You're not wrong. I know that's what you're thinking. But this is a North American city, and a light has been functioning great here thus far. One more point that I really want to make before, before the conclusion here. I mentioned chronic traffic earlier. What I mean when I say that is traffic that exists after letting the simulation run for a while. Every now and then you'll induce a wave of, of incoming vehicles or incoming sims or, you know, any incoming body of any kind by zoning a bunch of housing. Like, let's say I zone this entire area in. We do have residential demand and I will do this eventually. But if I zone this whole spot in, that is going to induce a bunch of demand and they may come in by rail, which would be great. I would prefer that. Or they may come in via highway, also fine, whatever whatever works. But if you zone in that whole area all at once, you're going to cause a, a lot of vehicles that are all going to the same place. Like I said earlier, you got to ask, are the cars going to, is there a reason for them to use alternate lanes? In this situation, there wouldn't be. They'd all be coming off the highway, going to the same place. So this right lane would probably back up with traffic coming in to move in here. The thing with that that uh, I would call that temporary traffic, maybe a temporary backup of some sort, which is distinct from a chronic backup that, that stays forever because that's going to end at some point. So I do recommend running the simulation and letting it, letting it kind of settle because there is an equilibrium it'll reach if you zone a large area all at once. Um, that will cause a traffic backup that is absolutely distinct from, from a chronic traffic problem that lasts over time. Here we go. I've reinstated the highway and now the intersection is back to equilibrium. There's no overload in that one lane. Um, forcing traffic to all go to the same destination through the same route is always going to cause that. So keep in mind, make other connections, respect road hierarchy. I have heard the claim, as a side note, I've heard the claim that road hierarchy doesn't really work and that Sims will always choose the shortest route. And that's actually not true. The pathing system causes the the vehicles to factor in the speed limit of the roads. So keep in mind, part of why road hierarchy works so well is that the larger roads have higher speed limits. Starting from local, the collector roads will be a little faster, the arterials will be a little faster, and then the highway will be the fastest. So case in point, in my example here, starting from the local road, 25 miles per hour, uh, the collector is 30, the arterial is 40, all the way up to the highway, which in my case is 70 miles per hour by default. So it does factor in, or it is factoring in, what's the fastest route that they can take. Sometimes, I think most often, most often the fastest route is the shortest route, but you have a much better shot of it working as intended if you respect road hierarchy and go from small roads to medium roads to large roads to highway. Um, that way you can really control the path that the cars are taking so you don't get a, an asymmetrical backup anywhere. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I think that that is gonna cover everything I intended about the traffic system in city skylines. I really hope that these ideas and, and tips and this approach can help you get the traffic under control in your city. My name is Yumble. I make a couple YouTube videos a week. Feel free to subscribe here. I also stream on Twitch several times a week, so feel free to follow me there if you'd like. 
and I recently made a Patreon, so for those of you that have been asking how they can support outside of YouTube and outside of Twitch, Patreon is certainly the best way. I cannot express how much I appreciate it. This uh, YouTube journey has been amazing, and uh, I'm glad that people still watching the the <laughs> the builds that I do as well as the tutorials. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.